be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to God, God forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O gracious light, pure the brightness of our God in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, gracious, holy, and full of life. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O image of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified for all the worlds. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, by the preaching of your blessed servant and bishop Ninian, you caused the light of the gospel to shine in the land of Britain. Grant, we pray, that having his life and labors in remembrance, we may show our thankfulness by following the example of his zeal and patience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were, were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today actually is the Feast of St. Ninian, but the saint we're going to celebrate tonight is the saint for tomorrow, uh, who's our, one of our favorites. We celebrate her every year, and you know what? We could celebrate her uh, ten times a year, and I'd still be happy doing that, because we love St. Hildegard. St. Hildegard of Bingen. We love her because our bell is named for her. We love her because she's a powerful woman in the church. We love her for many, many reasons. And uh, if we were ever going to rename our church, from St. Stephen to something else. We could be St. Hildegard's Episcopal Church. I think that would be wonderful. I would be all right with that, but I don't think that's gonna happen. But still, we could, uh, we could say, big St. Stephen's little St. Hildegard. We could put a little chapel off to the side or something. I don't think that's gonna happen either. <laughs> so we're gonna hear a little bit about St. Hildegard of Bingen from our good friend Robert Ellsberg. Uh, she was an abbess, she was a visionary, she was born in 1098, died in 1179, so, you know, not that long ago. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to hear a little bit about her. Well, but it's just amazing. She lived a long time ago, but she's still as fresh and contemporary mm -hmm. as possible. That's the amazing thing about her. In the year 1141, a fiery light flashing intensely came up from the open vault of heaven and poured through my whole being, she said. Like a flame that is hot without burning, it kindled in my heart and all my breast, and just as the sun warms anything on which its rays fall, and suddenly I could understand what such books as the uh, I could understand what such books as the Psalter, the Gospels, and other Catholic volumes, both of the Old and New Testament, actually set forth. Saint Hildegard was, by any standard, one of the most remarkable figures of her, of her age, 
abbess and foundress of the Benedictine religious community, uh, author and theologian, prophet and preacher, musician and composer, poet and artist, doctor and pharmacist. Now who in our current age could say all of those things? So that's pretty amazing in and of itself. So of her own age, she was remarkable. She's remarkable by our age. So that is uh, that alone is pretty incredible. She had visions in which the word of God, both in scriptures, in scripture and in the book of nature, was revealed to her. Yet for 800 years, she remained in relative obscurity. Only in recent decades has she emerged into the light, partly thanks to contemporary uh, interest in the role of women in history. But increasingly, Hildegard is honored not only as an outstanding woman of history, but as a visionary whose ecological and holistic spirituality speaks uh, prophetically to our own time. Hildegard was born in 1098 in the German province of Rheinhessen. Rheinhessen, we love even saying that. That's fun to say. The tenth child of noble parents. When she was eight, she was given to the care of a holy anchoress, a blessed Utah. Now, an anchoress, we cover anchoresses and anchorites here on a regular basis. Anchoresses, anchorites, were people who uh, were attached to a church. They had a little cell that was attached to a church. They lived in, a, in a, a, a very solitary existence. They weren't quite like nuns. They weren't quite like monks. They didn't live in a monastery. They lived at a regular church just in their own little cell attached to the church. We're thinking of Julian of Norwich was, was an anchoress. So Blessed Utah was an anchoress that Hildegard went to, uh, to learn, her, learn about things. She, uh, Blessed Utah lived in a cottage attached to the nearby Benedictine Abbey. Utah raised the child and educated her until the age of 18, when Hildegard put on the habit of a Benedictine nun. By this time, a monastic community had gathered around about Utah. When the old woman died in 1136, Hildegard became prioress. Now, I know I preach about this all the time, but it's important, especially every time we celebrate one of these, these particular saints, to talk about what it meant to be a nun at this time. Now, for us, in our own age, we think being a nun is this noble thing, it's this very obscure thing. People don't, women don't do it anymore, men don't become monks anymore. But in that particular time, women didn't have a lot of choices in their life. They could get married, or they could become a nun. That was pretty much it. There wasn't anything else really out there for a woman to do. And to some extent, we could say, arguably, I'm sure people would maybe disagree with me on this, but the, the calling to be a nun was more than just a religious calling. It was also kind of an independent uh, aspect of independence. When you became a nun, you learned, you, you were educated. They, they educated you as a nun. You had to read. You had to know how to read. And the, ab uh, the abbeys and, and abbes, uh, uh, the female versions of the ab ab uh, ab um, <laughs> the uh, the monastery. Uh, what, do, what do they call a female? The mother. Yeah. No, what do they call a female monastery? A convent, I suppose. We could yeah. say just a convent, couldn't we? Uh, well, the convents and, and the abbeys themselves were places of learning. People came from all around to go to these particular places to learn. They were drawn to them, not just spiritually, but just intellectually. And so in that sense, uh, becoming a nun was this really great and powerful thing. But even more so, becoming an abbess was particularly powerful because an abbess was essentially on par with a bishop. Now, people live streaming can't see this, but if we look at St. Benedict and Scholastica window over there, um, you'll see that uh, St. Benedict is on one side, his sister Scholastica is on the other. So Scholastica, of course, was uh, the essentially the founder of the Women's Order of the Benedictine Order, which St. Hildegard was a member of. And you'll see that in her hand she is holding a crozier, which is a crook, a long stick with a big crook on the end. We see bishops carry those. And it is a sign of being a bishop. Well, essentially, an abbess had the same power as a bishop, at least over her particular convent. She could bless. She could bless her, her daughter, so to speak. She could do a blessing on things. Not everybody could do that. Women certainly were not normally allowed to do that. An abbess could do that. And abbesses and bishops 
often went head to head at each other, which is amazing. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But all of this is very, very important to understand about what's going on at this particular time and why people were doing this. And, uh, and I also just want to say one other thing about that too. Uh, every so often we celebrate uh, Sor Juana de la Cruz, who was a Spanish nun. Fascinating, another very fascinating woman. But what is very fascinating about her, and I think it was true probably to a lot of women who joined the convent at that time, women didn't always join the convent for religious reasons. For example, Sor Juana de la Cruz talks talk quite often in her, her, uh, in her journals about the fact she wasn't particularly religious. She had issues with religion. She had doubts. You Oftentimes, you went into a religious order because that was all you had. If you didn't want to get married, you became a nun. And it didn't always have to do with, oh, I got this calling from Jesus to be his bride in the convent. It wasn't always like that, despite what St. Therese of Lisieux uh, did. And we love St. Therese, too. Um, uh, up to this point, it seems Hildegard was uh, an unexceptional nun. Only to Utah had she confided the secret of her visions, which, as she later wrote, she had enjoyed since the age of three. Which is pretty amazing. These visions which I saw, she said, I beheld neither in sleep nor dreaming, nor in madness, nor with my bodily eyes or ears, nor in hidden places. But I saw them in full view and according to God's will, when I was wakeful and alert with the eyes of the Spirit, and the inward ears. After she became prioress, her visions uh, pressed upon her with greater urgency until she eventually described them to her confessor. She was uh, bidden to write them down, and the text was presented to the Archbishop of Mainz. He in turn read them and had them examined by a team of theologians who certified their orthodoxy. Now that sounds really sweet and nice too. It really does. But that's not always a good thing. Um, first of all, the fact that they were going to the archbishop no doubt created a huge amount of anxiety for poor Hildegard because if they hadn't found their orthodoxy, she'd be in a lot of trouble. We'll get into this in a little bit. Henceforth, she was provided uh, with a monk as secretary. So she actually had a man as her secretary. Pretty amazing, too, for the time. And with his help, she began her major work, Scivius or Know the Way, which occupied her efforts over the next uh, 10 years. Eventually, Pope Eugenius III himself read her book and authorized uh, her to continue to write. Her Scivias is the record of a series of visions concerning the relationship between God, humanity, and the cosmos. With extraordinary symbolic um, paintings that accompany the text, Hildegard presents a picture of human beings and the cosmos as emanations from God's love, living sparks or rays of God's splendor, just as the ray of the sun proceeded from the sun itself. She shows the effects of sin in rupturing creation and the drama of redemption that ultimately restores the world to its unintended state, purified of its infirmities and reconciled with the divine energy of its origins. Now, again, that one paragraph there, there is so much in there. I can't even begin to unpack all that's, that is being conveyed in there, but it's in the Scythias. They're amazing. They are absolutely stunning. <clears throat> About this time, Hildegard received a divine call to move her community to a new site uh, on the Rupertsburg, a hill over, uh, above the Rhine near Bingen. This involved an ordeal with the monks and the town of her original foundation, who depended on the traffic of pilgrims and thus adamantly opposed her plan. So where she had been originally, they didn't want her to move because they were making money off her. So she goes, I'm still going to move. I'm not going to worry about that because she's Hildegard of Bingen. She can do, well, she's not yet Hildegard of Bingen. She's about to move to Bingen, but she's Hildegard and she doesn't care. Anyway, but after she became deathly ill, a frequent occurrence when Hildegard's will was crossed, she had her way. That's the way to do it. I need to do that more often. Fake an illness. Oh, I want my chapel of St. Hildegard. Start with a sump pump. <laughs> Start with a sump pump. <laughs> Between 1152 and 1162, Hildegard made numerous preaching tours through the Rhineland. 
Her authority as a holy preacher was widely recognized, and her reputation extended far beyond her native Germany. Again, that alone is remarkable. This is a woman going around preaching theology to people, and people are, she's like a rock star at the time. Uh, she corresponded with kings, popes, and other figures of note, sharing her spiritual insights, but also freely dispensing criticism where she felt it was needed. <laughs> Besides her religious writings, she wrote extensively on medicine and physiology. She avidly studied the use of medicinal herbs and seems to have anticipated the principles of homeopathy. In addition, she composed religious music of haunting beauty and originality. And we can still hear it. There's many, many recordings of her music that's out there. and there, it's, it's incredible. Music, she wrote, was a symbol of the harmony that Satan disturbed. Uh, there are elements of Hildegard's visions which speak of our ecological age. She had a wide understanding of the cosmos as a whole and of the human place in it. Human beings, she wrote, are the universe in a microcosm, made of the same elements that constitute the world. But within the great cosmos, many human beings are the thinking heart called to be co-creators with God in shaping the world. Through human sin, the entire world was fractured and fell out of harmony with the cosmos. But this sin does not erase the original goodness and blessing of creation. Through Christ, first fruits of a new creation, the cosmos and human beings find their way back to their original destiny. Constantly, Hildegard refers to God as living light, and she employs a remarkable word, greenness, greenness to describe the animating uh, energy or grace of God that shines forth in all living things. For this holistic vision, Hildegard has been particularly celebrated by proponents of quote-unquote creation spirituality. Creation spirituality is a, a big thing within the last 40 years or so in the church. It has become very, very uh, powerful. Um, toward the end of her life, Hildegard ran afoul of local church authorities after she allowed a young man who had been excommunicated to be buried in the monastery cemetery. Again, wonder why she's one of our patron saints here? We do that all the time as well. But in those days, to do that, you've been excommunicated? That was a no-no. You could not do that. Especially this upstart woman doing things like this in her monastery where she thinks she can run anything. Uh, she uh, was ordered to have the body disinterred. This, Hildegard refused insisting that before dying, the youth had been reconciled with the church and received the sacraments. Nevertheless, the bishop had the convent placed under an interdict, forbidding the celebration or reception of the Eucharist. It was a terrible sanction, and Hildegard protested bitterly. Eventually, the interdict was lifted, but she lived only a few months longer. She died on September 17, 1179. Fascinating, wonderful woman. We love Hildegard. She was like in her 80s. Yeah, for that time, that was quite, quite the life. So uh, we love her. She is just so important. We're so happy we have this bell in her memory, Hildegard of Ringen, of course, as we call it. And uh, and so she is. Uh, she's just a truly brilliant person. And uh, I love these stories. She there. When we think about Hildegard, we think about the remarkable story that she had. Remember that there are multitudes of these women at that time who were doing things like this. And we find them in Julian Norwich and, and multiple women who were living around that same period of time doing these really remarkable things. And, uh, and we're so grateful, not only for them, but we're grateful that their stories weren't lost, that we are still able to celebrate them, that their work is still out there, that we are able to, uh, to just give thanks to God for what these remarkable women did, and especially for the influence they have on women in the church now. That's a big thing. The church needs those examples of those women saints in the past because, you know, the church has been a terrible place for women, and it was for Hildegard. And this is something we really have to work to overcome. And so by celebrating these very powerful women, it's our effort to make sure that the church uh, shows some reconciliation for their, for their faults in the past. We're gonna to close tonight with the prayer for St. Hildegard because she is just so wonderful and deserves 
all the honor we can give her. So let us pray. God of all times and seasons, give us grace Give us grace that we, after the example of your servant Hildegard, may both know and make known the joy and jubilation of being part of your creation, and show forth your glory not only with our lips, but in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven, heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer prayers to our loving and all-accepting God, saying, Hear our prayers. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. For the church, for this holy gathering, for St. Stephen's, and for the people of God in every place, holy God. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this congregation, that we may grow in holiness and vitality, holy God. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us who follow Jesus our Savior, striving in our own ways to love God and love each other as equals. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all peoples and their leaders, for our nation and our leaders, and for us during this time of upheaval and division, and for justice, mercy, and peace in this world. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the victims of racism, violence, and any form of discrimination, that justice and equality may prevail. Holy God, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are affected by the coronavirus, that they may find relief, healing, and recovery. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are suffering, for those who are dying, and for all who are in need of prayer. This evening we remember in our prayers, Josh, Mark, Leslie, Brian, Bob, Nyleen, and all COVID-19 patients. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are in any kind of special need, especially this evening, we pray for Steve, for Tom, for Mary Lee, for Darla, for Lauren, and for Brian. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our own prayers, repeated either silently or aloud, I invite you now to share those. Holy God, hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ and for all of the departed, especially this evening we remember in our prayers Joanne and Joshua Como. Holy God, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Stephen the Martyr, and all creation, let us offer ourselves and one another to you, the living God, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Holy God, hear our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> Holy God, accept all we offer you this day. May we who are reconciled at this table bring wholeness to our broken world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other 
in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Let God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please be, uh, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Please be seated. Just a few announcements before we continue with our service. Uh, of course, it seems like it was just a little while ago, or it seems like a long time ago, depending on where you might be in your life, but we, we dedicated the labyrinth, rededicated the labyrinth on Sunday, and it went Wonderful! It was a beautiful, beautiful day. We got a great turnout for it. Uh, if you have missed it, it is on YouTube. It is on our Facebook groups. It's all there, so make sure you check it out. Uh, the sound isn't that great because we were outside, but you get the idea of what we were doing. And it was a lot of fun. It was really, really great. And it's just been wonderful to see people uh, walking the labyrinth. It's a hit in the neighborhood. It is a hit in the neighborhood with a bullet. <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, a, few, uh, a few things looking ahead down the road. Well, one major thing. Uh, on October 4th, we will be doing our blessing of animals, as we always do. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's always fun. So if you have any pets that you'd like to have brought to church to be blessed, we'll be doing that at 1 o'clock on Sunday, October 4th. Uh, it is the actual feast of St. Francis of Assisi that day, so that is going to be wonderful. Uh, share the news with other people. Make sure you let other people know. We will be doing social distancing at that. So we're asking people to wear masks, of course, and we'll be doing it outside, weather, depend weather dependent on that. But we will uh, we'll be doing it outside no matter what. It's going to either be cold and wet or really nice, and we'll pray for the nice weather for that. So that is on October 4th. Uh, looking ahead a little bit further down the road, uh, we w uh, there is, of course, the diocesan convention coming up at the end of October. Uh, we're going to be doing that a little different. Nobody's going to be going out to Bismarck to the Radisson again this year. We didn't do it last year either. Uh, I think it was a blizzard last year that we yeah. couldn't get out there. And then we ended up doing it here in Fargo. We ended up doing it here in Fargo. Well, this time we're going to be doing it uh, virtually. So uh, that is going to be very interesting. So be praying for our delegates as we gather to, uh, to, to do that and figure out how we're going to be doing that. I'm still not 100% certain how it's going to happen. But you know what? We'll have it figured out by the time it happens. So that is uh, that is good, and it's going to be an important convention, of course, because we're in such a uh, time of transition here in the diocese. So we'll be praying for the diocese during this time as well. I think that's all for announcements. I can't think of anything else. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth is given and human hands have made. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Come, Almighty God, our sanctifier, and bless this sacrifice now made ready for your holy name. continues on page four. surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, gracious, holy God, we bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Holy God, we now celebrate this memorial of your Son. By means of this holy bread and cup, 
we show forth the sacrifice of his death and proclaim his resurrection until he comes. Gather us by this holy communion to one body in your Son, Jesus Christ, and make us a living sacrifice of praise. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God. This is the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this supper. And at this time, let us pray for all those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. Lord Jesus, be present with those who long to be here and receive your Holy Presence in this Eucharist. Come spiritually into their hearts and let them know your healing, loving, and life-giving presence. And never let them be separated from you. pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.